Hello everybody, welcome to the official live cast of the round of 32 clash between Bright and his Necromantic up against Andri and his Imperial Nobility. This is game two. Game one was a 1-1 draw. Bright has won the toss, chosen to receive again. As you can see, these teams are pretty close in colour scheme with this pink and white stripes versus like... is what what I don't even know what colour this is. Um, and brown, so I think it's best. It's so it's really close. We've got to go red and blue. We've got to go red and blue. We just have to. Um, so yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Very interesting. Two very good coaches, Bright and Andre. And uh, I can tell you that Bright won his group. He's Russian and he qualified through the Ruby BL. Uh, Andre is a Spanish, qualified through the season three official playoffs, and was runner-up in his group. Um, his group consisted of three Imperial Nobility teams, so that's how we've got an Imperial Nobility team in the in the round of 32. So yeah, it's potentially, it's the last round of 32 matchup. It's potentially the last game. If it's decisive, it will be the last game of the round. Um, if it's a draw, though, we will see a third and final tiebreaker match between these two. which will have overtime enabled. Not much of a quick snap there. Interesting. I feel I'd have moved like the wolf just cause right now. You know where the ball is. I mean, my prediction is Necro, obviously, because <laughs> they're Necro. Like, it is a good package for the uh, knobs, right? They get six guard, which is a really good amount of guard. They get two blodge, which is great. They've got a leader, so they get a normal amount of rerolls. Like, the package is fantastic, how many skills they get. Like, you know, one of them, they get, well, they get nine skills and one's a double. So, like, they get, they get a really nice package, but... <laughs> as, as, as much as they've got a lovely package um, it's the base that it's built on isn't as good right only 7 skills for the necro 4 guard couple of block and a wrestle it is a norm it's it's an abnormal build he hasn't got the double wolf Devo's got the double wolf 3 block um, Bright and Diamond have only gone with 1 wolf that gets them an extra reserve a yeah, lovely package. It's, it's. I mean, it really is a lovely package. It's a beautiful package that these knobs have. <laughs> but is it good enough to make up for the fact that they are, in fact, knobs? Probably not. You might as well keep this in contact, right, because you've got two guards there. I guess the thing is it encourages the uh, Ogre Blitz in, which then he can assist him hitting the other... Like, you know, if you push him to there... You can't follow because of Fend. So that encourages the Ogre Blitz into this, which meant, then means it gives a 2D there. So if you're okay with him Ogre Blitzing into here, then this is okay. But if you're not okay with him Ogre Blitzing in, or, or even like the Bodyguard Blitzing into here, and then giving him another 2D. Beautiful package. <laughs> well, I'd go the other way. It's a real grower, right? It's a real grower. The problem is, it's just started so small, right? Like, that's the thing. <laughs> that's the problem, right? Stuff like wood elves, woodies, they start off majestic. And they don't need a lot of, they don't need a lot to grow, right? They're, they don't need to grow a lot. They've already got the blodge on the, uh, on the dancers, right? They've got blodge leap on a movement eight, strength three, add two plus player, right? They don't need, they don't need to grow a lot. Whereas basically, Imperial Nobility are like a micro, micro blood ball team. <laughs> 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 micro B-Benus. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's what they are. <laughs> oh dear. So while they have got while they're adding nine skills to it. <laughs> Tickled myself for that. Sorry. Oh, age of Canucks. Flip me. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely PG thirteen. Don't worry. Don't worry. Nothing's nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. It's right. It's right though. Right. It's, not all teams are created equal, and uh, you know, Necro. Oh, like especially like just getting the guards, getting the guards and the wraiths, right? It's it's like lizard men getting the block on the saurus, right? Like that's actually hard to do normally in the league, right? You've got to score on saurus. It's not that easy. You can only do it if you're dominant and stuff, and you know, completely in control. Then okay, we can hand off to a a, lizard, a saurus or whatever. But just starting with all block lizards is mad, or like you know, guard lizard as uh, guard saurus if you want to tackle saurus, I. I'm not I'm not converted by Spartacus, but I'm not as close minded as I was before. But um you know, like at least at least like you just get the skills and those hard like the hard like it's it's hard enough to skill fleshies, right? And then you're getting fleshies with guard, whites with guard, wraiths with guard. It's pretty power that's pretty powerful. So there's that you know, they do benefit a lot from the, the few skills that they get. And then you've got like benefiting from the money as well and stuff, so certain teams benefit more or less. Like dwarves want everybody to have less money, right? And Amazons and undead, they'd all like everybody to have less money. But wood elves get like the perfect amount of money. Dark elves don't quite get enough. Necro don't quite get enough. So there's there's a lot of things in play. Uh, why don't you want to play this game? Just Steam, I guess, and also. I think it's free on PlayStation, if you've got PlayStation Plus or whatever, and uh, Xbox. You can't get it on Switch, but it's on it's on Xbox and PlayStation and PC, yep. <laughs> oh god, really, Cosmigo. <laughs> but yeah, this is, this is a, I mean, it's cross-platform, it's cross-platform, so we do have two people, I think, in the top 16 who are on PlayStation. So, there you go. Yeah, the guards. Panning in a bit, right? Still got to, still got to hold the width. Only lost one player. That's that's quite good. The problem for is going to be for Andres if he loses a bunch of players. Big pal. And another pal. That was less important, right? Because he, he hasn't got stand firm, it's just the thrower. But I guess he had to put the thrower in there because if he, if the thrower you know he wants the, he wants to stand firm holding the wings. Doesn't stand firm. Tempting him into the ogre hit. <laughs> Will he bite? I don't think so. He does? Oh, flip. Oh, he's going to blitz the ogre. No, he's already blitzed. Wow. Wow. Not a fan of that from, Br from Bright. Instantly getting your fleshy mighty blowed.
fouls that guarder. But I mean, he's still instantly get okay. So now he's got to go in to protect his. That protects him a bit, doesn't it? Because now he's four, five, six. So he's got to commit another guard to be able to make the ogre hit here, and it's a rush for him, or it's giving up the sideline from him, or he's got to blitz this one first, or, or this one first. Yeah, so he just blitzes first. So he he did have to blitz a fleshy. And it's stunned. And now he gets to block the other one. Nobs. Nobs, nobs, nobs. Yep. I mean, bobs as well, right? They've got to protect the goblins, and lizards have to protect the skinks. And there we go, well done Ogre. Had it been the block Ogre. <sighs> this is the problem, right? This is the problem with knobs. Um, six guard is pretty strong. But the block Ogre kind of feels essential. And then if you go the block Ogre, it means you not only do you lose guard on the Ogre, you lose guard on the thrower as well. So it's costing you two, like you're swapping two guard for it. It's real hard. Real hard call. <laughs> yeah, Cosmo, you go, yeah, okay. The problem is they're impeding ability. And, uh, yeah. I mean, that is the problem. That is the problem. They are impeding ability. Yeah. Yep. You could whack the wraiths in here and hit with a wolf, but. This isn't great, is it? The, the stun and the knockdown makes anything uncomfortable here. Wrestled again. Oh my god, this wolf. <laughs> This wolf just pushes or is wrestled like every time. <laughs> I guess it'll be less frustrating for Bright, like because they played yesterday, so like he's had, he's had twenty four hours, well twenty two hours to get over his wolf just pushing and both downing all the time. But <laughs> it's quite funny after watching the replay straight into, straight into the wolf just one in nines versus a wrestler again. Huge one dice there. Absolutely huge one dice. Incredible result. Incredible. And then makes a stun for no send off. Also incredible. Two huge dice rolls there to basically save this turn for, for and probably the drive for Bright. If that one dice had been a skull, then like everything's getting collapsed in. But now, instead of sculling, he's powered and he's stunned two players. And it's, uh, yeah, I think that saved the drive for Brian. I mean, not that it was, you know, definitely over if it, that didn't happen, but that should make it, yeah, yeah, that should make it pretty safe now. Because like next turn, he'll have the fleshy back up. And the wolf active, and he should be kind of all right. Andre's got to work out and not get his blitzer surfed here. Not that it's a you know unsolvable problem, just like you know it's something that you've got to. Uh, Make sure it doesn't happen. Is this a rush? 
Yeah. He almost has to, because otherwise he blocks him and pushes him, he goes to there, which is surely bad. Now he rushes with the other one. Nice. I do feel like a push could have been very bad there, though. <laughs> like, very bad, but... He gets away with it. Like, if that's a push, and he sidesteps up to here, he wrestles this one down, and then he can push him to there and surf him, right? You've got to block them with a wrestler just because you've already got wrestle and you really don't want one of your guards going down. So I think that was always the play to punch him with the gowl. Mm, fleshies together to protect versus the ogre. I don't know what that means, but Alor, so. Mm. It was. It was a solism. <laughs> Neither of these people made uh, four cars in the last game, Sol, so they should they should learn from you. Simply go for the kills. <laughs> That's a very good strategy. Do you know what you should do here? Stick the ball on the sideline. And then go for a five plus dodge to surf this guy. Don't. The funny thing is, that's not even bad, right? As much as, like, it seems hilariously bad, it's not even that bad. <laughs> the fleshy. That's the pal. Full pal. Now we've got the old Necro Blitz, he's got to dodge him away, hasn't he? Ugh, disgusting. Yeah, no, it's absolutely not, it's just secure again, right? The thing is, um, the, the drive was in trouble, right? The previous turn, and that 1D, I think, got him out of... I think the 1D before got Bright out of disaster. Whereas now, it's still up in the air. But I think that avoided disaster the, the, the previous turn. <laughs> Thanks, Sol. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's really not as it's really not a totally one-sided match at all. It's, uh, I mean, I, I lost to Talk 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 in the uh, NAF Cup that we had. It's it's not, you know, they're not a complete joke, uh, knobs. It's just funny to talk about them like they are, isn't it? Like maybe bright 60-40 to win, right? Like, it's not crazy at all. Yeah, 
six guard, six guard, and two bludgers, like six guard, two bludgers, that's, if you put that on like any other, any other team, <laughs> looks pretty good, doesn't it? Ugh. That is a tragic Ogre Blitz. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, as far as coaching goes in this top 16, um, which, with which one of these people will be, there's no slouches, like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I was, it's, I'd rather not be... <laughs> I'd rather not be playing Davo, but, like, it's not like any of these people are easy games anyway, you know, so... Hmm, surprised he kept that in or rather didn't put this guy in uh, so I, I would feel if you if you're gonna leave these two players over here then like put them in there and there to try and constrict these guys as well and like make them fight over this rather than just letting them walk away and then you have three players um, you know stranded yeah yeah the stundies were completely unplayable yeah yeah I think that's fair to say because me though and the, the Chaos and the Nurgle were bad. The Chaos and the Nurgle were pretty bad. Oa, Oa qualified from their group, dog to the dog. I mean, they, they did it by winning one game and losing two, but they did qualify for the... Uh, they did qualify for the final phase. Probably is humans only at the four guard. I mean, humans are, humans are good in that they're fast. They can actually, like, fight, you know, Elves and Skaven a bit. But they lose to, like, all... The humans lose to all the Bashy teams is the problem. Oh, doubles, this is a huge block. Flip me. Okay, that was... I mean, this was pretty... This was pretty wild to move these guys first, right? And just have them out there. And now 181 gets your ball sacked. Yeah, exactly, Cosmic. <laughs> like Dirk Diglett. I mean, the thing is, it's not like Wood Elves still win a, a decent percentage of the time versus humans because they're still Wood Elves, right? Like, that's the problem. When you're like a good racial matchup, is Wood Elves or Skaven. <laughs> it ain't so good, is it? <laughs> They're very likely just to do things and beat you anyway, so... Like, you know, I still think it favours them, but like, what I mean is it's... Well, it doesn't even favour them, that's what I mean, like... It, it it's one of the humans' best matchups, but it's not. Still not good. <laughs> exactly. Like they're starting with this because they you know everyone else is, isn't allowed to stack, but Wood Elves start with block dodge leap all stacked onto a movement eight strength three edge two plus player. And then they get to add another skill to that stack. Like, it's insane, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, like people who, you know, make Blood Bowl rule sets seem to think that stacking is something awful that shouldn't be done. And yet Wood Elves just start with an insane stack. For free. <laughs> they start with their two best players with, like, a full, fully ridiculous overpowered stack. So I do like getting away from these three, right? This is the thing. I, I like getting away from those three, which is why. Like, I didn't like having the third guy over here. I would have wanted the third guy over there. I think he could have gotten to here. But if you if you are going to put the third guy over here, that's that's exactly what I said, right? You have to put them all three in so that these guys just don't get free, free away. And this guy just moved away. This guy moved away. And the zombie as well moved away. Whereas if these three had all been in here, 
he would have at least you know made the cover for the break less for uh, Bright. Yeah, exactly, Jeff. Yeah. And I mean I don't think there's any probably about it. Cosme goal. I mean the only thing is is like good runners and then, but then that depends whether you count the fact that there's four of them, right? Necros have 13. So you get an extra one over the Davo build. Oh, foul appearance. You use the reroll to hit the foul appearance guy. That always feels terrible, doesn't it? But he, he, he had to because foul appearance buff means he would have just been stood here like an idiot and just had to get him over there. It's one of the worst things about blitzing foul appearance. Probably should have moved this guy first as well, right? Move him there or something. I mean, it's hard to say. Gutters are even better ball carriers, right? Like having strength three and blodge is pretty incredible. And Lee dancers are are undoubtedly the strongest all around starting piece. Undoubtedly the best all around. And then you can. Then you can argue semantics about different things, you know, when it comes to developing them and one turning and stuff like that. It's funny, we, we had a league on Fumble where you were allowed any player, because I thought that'd be quite cool, right, just to see what people would make if they could allow any any players, and every single team had one war dancer and one gut runner on the team. <laughs> <laughs> Every single team, no matter what anybody else did, they they had one war dancer and one gutter runner minimum. And I think that's reasonable. Oh, nice little stun. This isn't an obvious turn here for Bright, is it? It's turn seven. He has to get in range. There's a couple free here, there's a couple in front there his players are kind of trapped in here this is tricky and there's tomb guardians as well though right, like it depends how much progression you're getting, tomb guardians are pretty incredible right, starting Strength 5 or 100 is ridiculous. Saurus, obviously ridiculous. Chorf blockers used to be amazing. Now it's you just down to dwarf ones. Obviously, Zon Linos are incredible. Particularly the Underworld Gutter, right? The Underworld Gutter is incredible. On a per player, the Underworld gutter is just better than the normal gutter. High elf catches are like a good canvas to paint on, but uh, you know, they're, they're, they're like humiliated by... <laughs> High elf catches are humiliated by war dancers, aren't they? <laughs> They've got the same stat line, but one starts with block dodge leap <laughs> for like 30k. It's insane. Or 35 now, I guess. Yeah, for value, yeah, good as good as are absolutely number one. Yeah. This is tricky, isn't it? I wonder how easy Bright thought this was going to be because 
I didn't think it would be easy at all. Like when I when I drew talk 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 in the NAF Cup, I was like, oh, this is annoying because Dimmy's gonna have my life if I lose, and I knew it wasn't easy. Like he's only got the the ghoul, and then try to dodge this guy. Him and then don't re roll. Doesn't re roll. This wasn't bad at all, was it? Actually, that was a pretty good. Because this is only a 1D. This is sidestep, so you can't do it. You can just. I guess he dodges. Maybe a 1D. Maybe just 1D this guy. You've got a dodge with dodge, and then he can run around the outside. Three, four, five, six, rush, rush. So dodge with dodge, and then run around the outside. Into a surf. No. <laughs> okay, he makes the dodge. Yeah, this was the most sensible thing, just dodge to get the assist. Because this block might not be a pound stuff, right? So double rush for a 2D with Wrestle. Fails the rush again, just like the last game. Two dice does not get the pow. Oof, tragedy. You just get to try and dodge players off, right? At least dodge this blodger off. Could go there, could go in front of the wolf, I don't know. Makes the dodge. And then it goes there. That seems quite good, right? Because then you're closing in the ghoul and basing another player. Just leave all this where it is. <laughs> Don't want to mess anything up, right? To... But I guess he can free a zombie. Does that mean he can free somebody then? Yeah, he can free. He can free a blocker, right? If he'd powed, if he'd powed this fleshy and then he'd powed this guy. A 1D, so it does do the dodge. That makes it a lot easier to free up. That does make it a lot easier, actually. No, that, no, that was a good dodge. That doesn't make it. That doesn't make it. Yeah, he could have freed the bodyguard. Yeah, it probably was. The problem is, like, just going stupid would have been terrible, right? Maybe it wouldn't have been that terrible. Freeing the bodyguard was pretty good, wasn't it? But you did need a pow, a full pow. Here we go. A instant, a full and instant power. Into removal. Outrageous. Is this just a one day blitz? Oh no, he can, uh. He couldn't free. He could. Have, he could try to free the zombie that would have made this a two D or something. I guess. This looks like it's a one D blitz, eh? Or do you do a one D there first? You could have thought about doing a one D here first, right? So that because he's only got one reroll, it's tough. Well, he gets the surf, gets the KO, gets the touchdown. All three KOs fail to recover. For Andre, he is in a pickle. These are the two important ones. 
Yeah, Andrew did do pretty well, yeah. Yep, Brian got some good dice to score. The instant pal against the stand firm was lovely, wasn't it? <laughs> it, it, I mean, it was, but he, he powered him and KO'd him. Which was pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> and it meant he still had the reroll for the uh, ghoul thing. Otherwise, the ghoul would have, you would have had to like do a 1D into a dodge, probably. Oh my goodness, a timeout. Maybe Bright could have set up against a timeout. But ultimately, it's not a great chance for Andre this, but. At least he can't push back the stand firmers, can he? So he can get he can get a line of three stand firmers with the uh, blitzer behind. Yeah, I hate time. I hate timeout so much because it like punishes you for playing well, right? That's the thing. The others you can maybe play around if you play well, but. Like, this just actively punishes you for being the one playing the best. <laughs> I hate it. I, I don't think you hit with the ogre here, right? Like, because, because, um, because Bright has two reserves. I think I wouldn't risk the ogre hit. I would just have blitzed with the blitzer. Because he's not gonna he's gonna not gonna need that extra movement. And the mighty blow isn't really making a difference. Most are bullshit, but but I think I hate this one the most. Because it feels like it's punishing you, it's punishing the good player. All of the others, like they're, they're at least random, right? Like the the second worst one is the ref, right? The officious ref. But like, yeah, the greasy creeps and the mummy, yeah, like they're all bullshit. They're all bullshit and terrible. But at least the greasy creeps is just random, right? At least that's just random. And also, it can, it can be a thing that factors into your racial choice, right? You might think, oh, well, I, I don't want to... T <laughs> it, if, it, you know, if I get greasy cleats on that mummy, well, it's my fault for picking undead, right? So... Yeah, but at least it's just random. At least it's just entirely random, like, you know, getting blitzed on. You can you can actually set up against making better use of a quick snap. You can set up for be, you know quick snap being less useful. You can set up for like all of the others. All of the others, you've got some kind of playing around, or they're entirely random, like a vicious ref. Whereas this one just seems to actively punish the good player. Now, of course. It's not necessarily punishing the good player because you you know you could have just got really lucky to get your score or whatever. But seeing as I'm usually the good player that scores on turn eight, it usually annoys me <laughs> more than the others. I mean, just greasy cleats in particular. It, it matters with the undead, right? Be that like that mummy, like that is a weakness of undead, like it, one that I'd never thought of. Until until it happened. <laughs> but the fact that greasy cleats can absolutely ruin a mummy is is something that can happen.
Is he gonna one day with a girl or something? I don't know what's that. Was you gonna rush with a wraith as well? Maybe not now that he's used the reroll. Yeah, that would have been a absolute disaster, wouldn't it? Probably just don't blitz now, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like the extra one in like that on the diagonal like that. Somehow. Oh! Oh, nice, nice. Tag the, tag the scoring threat. Nice. Yeah, wow, down to two minutes after the first half. That is interesting, isn't it? That is super interesting. That is a lot of time bound on. But if he gets it done, he gets it done. Hello, punter. Hello, Rolex. Funny enough, in Blood Bowl 2, I had the no timeout as pretty much all of my things because I hated it. <laughs> I, re I really hated timeout. But yeah, may maybe I'm biased. By thinking I'm good. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, lob it. And then blitz a fleshy down, and then three, four, four, three, two, two. Is it not? It's only, it's only one, two. That looks rubbish, doesn't it? But probably the best you can do. I've blocked this guy down first. I mean, he can think for a while, can't he, to think if there's something better. I feel like it's definitely better to hit the fleshy that doesn't have foul appearance. <laughs> but never mind. Never mind. I guess the push, the Wraith would have had to make it weaker somewhere. But you're a 75% knockdown anyway, aren't you? Adding like a, a straight 17% fail. Seems bad. I don't like, I don't like this. You could have just blocked this guy, right? That's better than... Oh, unless he's got to go there to avoid the ghoul intercept. Oh my god, this guy can still intercept. Oh, because it was inaccurate. It was inaccurate, that's how we had the intercept. Ah, chance. Okay. I hate that you roll the pass first now. It was so much better than you rolled the intercept. I know people complained about it because... Well, oh, can you do it? It's, like, it's, an abstract, it's an abstract sequence, isn't it? You just roll the dice to see what happens, like, I don't know why they have to say, oh, you don't even know it's going to go there, well, they, and loads of people said that, loads of people said that, so I'm probably annoying lots of people by saying this, but I hate that, like, it's just a board game, you don't have to do the throw in order, <laughs> you just, you just see if he intercepts it, if he intercepts it, that's it. Yeah, now this, now this deflections and stuff, oh, God. Yeah, he didn't have he didn't have good dice there, did he, Andrew? But you know he shouldn't have had the chance anyway, right? It was the timeout, so kind of all right in the end. Thank you, Rolex. <laughs> Thank you.
<laughs> like it's a board game. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it doesn't matter that like the idea of like you know this guy boneheads and then now he can't assist. But yeah, they'd all be playing at the same time. So like, do you know what I mean? Like everyone's fine with it being a turnover because you know something happened. With it. But like they're not. No one's standing around waiting to punch somebody, are they? So it's like the whole thing is like an abstract bloody board game. So why get hung up on the details of? You know, this is the chance to intercept the ball, it just happens. You do not agree. Well, that's fair enough, that Diane. You're entitled to your own opinions, as am I to mine. Officious ref. Doesn't get anyone... Oh, it can't! <laughs> Doesn't get anyone off permanently. But it does stun the guy who was going to get the ball. And he actually got both of his key KOs back. It's only a lineman, which doesn't matter. But that was a rough, a rough stun. But he, he can get the ball in the bludger anyway, right? So it's fine. Well, it's not fine. He's down a player for a few turns. But it's not game losing. So against a full necromantic team, obviously Andre's not going to try to win this game. He's just going to try to score and take it to a third. I actually quite like the ogre hit there to move this so that if you powed, this bodyguard could come around. It's there. I like this bodyguard coming around. And then this one could basically stay where he was right punching. So basically my, my way would have had an extra player in here. Oh my god, he's failed the ball pickup. Doesn't re-roll. No, he did re-roll. It was just the same dice roll. Did re-roll. So he's burnt a re-roll, he still hasn't got the ball, it's still on the sideline. And this guy was stunned, and now he's got a very thin line. But at least it's stand firm, so the the knocked over players. Still blocking the space through, so just about. I mean, if he removes this guy, there's a gaping hole. <laughs> Hyper brain, yes. All the teams and top ranked human player on NAF. <laughs> Five. I think you can call 505 all of them. <laughs> I've got about 20, which which seems a, like really a lot. <laughs> Honestly, if you stopped on 505, Rolex 505 would be a pretty good using. But I guess I guess you're not going to stop at 505. Taking a lot of time here. This doesn't look too bad, like, you know. Yeah, the Necros have crashed in a bit, but you've got your leader up. 
You've got your blitzers free. It's not horrific yet. I think the ogre has to not activate, right? I think the ogre has to not activate. And he maybe shouldn't have. <laughs> And now this ghoul, this wrestle ghoul, is uh, relevant. Okay, he can't, he can't reach the ball there unless he does like a four plus dodge. Now he can reach it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, no, he still can't. This is four plus dodge. Wait, no, now there's no dodge. Now he's just instantly hitting him. Oh, yep, yeah, he's realised. Yeah, activate Olga first, or don't activate. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair to say. Yeah, Andrew down to one real off picking up the ball sucks. Beats off the wolf. That might actually do Bright a favour though, right? Now it's free and not stuck on two guards. Tricky, tricky, tricky. White's got the big advantage in rerolls, so now like just having the big fight is better for him, right? Because there'll be annoying one in nines and stuff that Andrew will want to reroll. Or there's be a good chance of that at least. Comes around there. I'd have really, really wanted to stick the the wraith in there. <laughs> Don't know. Being off a of Croxigore is <laughs> the thing is they haven't got the uh, they haven't got. Mighty blow on you on, on your turn, have they? That's interesting, isn't it? Spreading the spreading the threat going over the other side. I think I, I it's I would have want I think I would have wanted to jam in here and keep attacking down this side, or go through the centre and then split off these two because that ogre bonehead looked so bad. Very interesting moving all the way over there. Maybe he should have moved this zombie first, so he could have taken the boat down. Oh, 
Oh, you can push him away. That seems amazing. Because then you get the other zombie in there, right? It's gonna foul. Well, I'd have put the zombie in there. Oh, and the foul gets spotted. Sent off. For no effect. Flip me. Yep, Bright's down to one and a half. Hate that turn from Bright, actually. Hello, Dementor. Welcome, Dementor and demented viewers. <laughs> No, I hate's a strong word. I didn't like that turn from Bright. I don't really know what his plan was, or um, it didn't seem very. Like I don't know. It didn't seem like he was. I couldn't work out what his plans were or what he was trying to do or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like maybe he's just trying to spread it spread out and yeah, as you say, like stop like a quick score maybe maybe that's his idea is to just try and i don't know jeff I don't even know how to describe it or whatever. It just, it's just weird. <laughs> it didn't seem like he was trying to do anything. Or I couldn't tell what he was trying to do. Which is more accurate, I guess. Quite liked um, not doing that. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. And then seven to there, right? Yeah, he had, he had two squares left. One, two, three, four, five, six. Push him that way and then go seven, right? Leaving him in contact seems bad, even with guard. And neither won game one. Um, to me, to Geppetto. That's right, it's nil nil there at the bottom. Game two. Zero zero. Nobody won the first game. It's a 1-1 one, one draw. And now 1-1 one, one draw is the best Andre can do out of this match. Bright has got his offence done, but he is down to 1 minute 27 of time bank. So. This looks quite collapsible, doesn't it? As much as like uninspiring, maybe as Bright's previous turn was, now he just gets to punch things repeatedly. This could look like it could be very, very bad turn for Andre. In fact, his whole team could like be collapsed. Blocks with block, but that means he does go down. Guarded for this two D. Do you uh do you block the bodyguard with a zombie here to free the wolf for a blitz or do you just Ah well he didn't follow so and he pushed the wolf there so push the coup Oh go there right I would have pushed him down to here and followed so he could hit with the wolf. Get to power anyway, but that would have been a two into a one, wouldn't it? I mean, it was a two into a one. If you uh, if you push the ogre to there and follow, then you could have punched him to here. It's a bit, it's a bit sloppy. It's a bit sloppy. You know, maybe there's nerves, nerves jangling. Oh, I hate this. I hate the the non-stand firm, and I hate the stand put, the state put. I'm bamboozled. I am bamboozled.
I am bamboozled. A very strong centre for Bright, hasn't he? Very strong centre. Nice stun. Still full 11, both sides. Misclick on the stand for... Do you reckon? But I mean, he didn't follow. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Could three dice the wolf? Looks like that's what he's doing. Because otherwise you would have blitzed him with the uh, wrestle, right? You would have thought. Not only going anywhere is he, Andre. That's the thing. Like you know, he's got he's got pretty much everything centre, and then so Bright's got pretty much everything centre as well. So you know, Andre has ended up completely stabilising from the scary first turns. You don't want to be panicking turn four, yeah. Yeah, I would have liked. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen any penetration. At all. <laughs> but, you know, things can happen, and waiting and waiting and waiting is, uh, it's understandable. It's surprising how often, you know, something does open up for you all by itself. Maybe not quad skulls, but I know just a mistake and stuff, you know, like... Random stun, random KO like this, right? You know, you can just, you can just wait and wait and things, you know, things eventually sometimes happen. A snake or a big bonehead or a big KO. Obviously waiting on defense is a bit easier than waiting on offense, but... Things do happen. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? The the Diamond and Bright way of Necro versus the Devo way of Necro, right? Devo's got his wolves and he's always trying to set up surfs either side. Trying to bang as much as possible with wolves. All about the removals. Whereas Bright and Diamond are like using it as a safety pretty much all the time. And if, if it can pick somebody unprotected off, they will. Whereas Devo's trying to force it in and get as much use out of possible of the claws in a frenzy. Interesting, isn't it? Interesting. And they're like both very successful. Oh, gold stacker. I tend to agree with the Devil route, but it's working out quite well for Diamond and Bright so far. Wrestle's so annoying, isn't it? Blocks like a million times better. <laughs> Maybe not a million, but a lot better when you're hitting things. I don't know if this is a wrestle, but... It's, it's quite, like, it's a good defensive skill, isn't it? Wrestle's like a good defensive skill, but a bad offensive one, generally. Generally, I mean, 
mean, even elves won't block most of the time, right, when they're hitting things. I'll still take block on the first wood elves and high elves that level up. Yes, it does, Amberino, yeah. Um, how do you see skills? Anybody know? <laughs> Why? No. H. The mentor was right. Yeah, yeah, there you go. See, having all of them on, it's a bit cluttered, isn't it? And it's harder to say which ones have been skilled. But yes, they do have sidestep foul appearance and block, as you can see there, um, which is incredible. Absolutely incredible having those three. Incredible. Oh, and I've hidden like no hands and regen. They've also got no hands and regen, but I've hidden them. I should probably hide some of these as well on the ogre, but I haven't. I think just just advanced is just a lot better, isn't it? A lot cleaner to see. Who's got what? Maybe you could make it so that only block shows up all the time. Yeah, the problem with the problem is skilling rates, isn't it? The problem is like skilling rates, and then the fact that you just get the slam guard on them instantly, and naf style is crazy, crazy powerful. Okay, turn fourteen. He's got somebody somewhere. Which is a good start. Ashley Armbar, Sega Bass Fishing on the Sega Dreamcast. No, I never owned a Dreamcast. The thing is, knobs are the ones getting hit more with, and they haven't got, you know, they've got less armor, right? They've, there's a claw in play, and they've got some AV8 plus players. So, they were, uh, they were unlucky with the pickups more than anything, haven't they, Pete? They've been unlucky with the ogre not doing anything, right? He's he's boneheaded a bunch, he hasn't removed anybody with mighty blow. Now they need him to, now more than ever. They need this ogre just to power this flesh golem and cast him. I mean, honestly, if the ogre powers this fleshy, it's really quite good, isn't it? Oh, God. Useless. Tough spot. Tough spot for Andre. Love that he's got the scoring threat, though. Probably have to blitz him with a wolf. Maybe you don't. Maybe you just blitz him with a wraith. Or a ghoul. And then you've got something all... Like, you've got less of a commitment. And you can keep your wolf central.
It's looking tricky for uh, Andre to get this touchdown, isn't it? I feel like I'd have moved the wolf back earlier. But maybe gone a bit more central. It's a tough one. He wants to cover everything. It's not easy. I don't, you know, I'd want it to be more central. But it's actually quite good now, isn't it? This, this, this like line of four. Having a bit of cover behind it. the front line is pretty nice. He is still weak at this side, but it's not so weak. You really have to power this fleshy with the ogre instantly. And if you do, you've got a shot. Bright is really hardly needed at any uh, time bank in the second half, but because he's gone into it, we do have this annoying bug. If you can power him, you can blitz him, and you can get a bit in front, and then you can get the ball up there. Or you can try and go through here a little bit, right? This guy can blitz him. And get three through and four is maybe the best way, isn't it? Actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then these three all through there. Oh, in fact, this is the guy just one, two. Yeah, this is the way to go. Yeah, there's a wolf there. I actually really much preferred it when the ghoul was there. This seems too weak, doesn't it? Like, yes, it's trap space, but it's all you've got. Okay. Okay, so getting the stun makes that incredible, but I feel like blitzing him was way better, right? Because you can just power him and then you can go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whereas now you've got to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, rush, rush, or you've got to dodge. That was really weird. And like a push got you through on him, whereas this had to be a pow. Weird, weird blitz choice, and he had a roll foul appearance. Weird blitz choice by Andre, in my opinion. But again, you know, lots of stress. You better pay off, right? Better pay off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, rush, rush. So the rush, rush is more likely to get there, but he's only got one reroll, so yeah, dodge. Yeah, like pounding this guy is better than just having him tagged there, right? Oh, lovely, lovely dodge. So he's in, he's in range, isn't he? Three, six, seven, one rush away from scoring. Yeah, but I think a mistake by Bryant last turn, moving this ghoul. I, I love the ghoul stood there, or there, or anywhere. Really weird moving him. Really weird move by Bryant. Uh, well, do you know what, Punter? I've got, I've, there is a setup guide. There is a setup guide for like generic defensive setups. I was thinking of doing a uh, racial ones as well after the World Cup, but um, for things like this, Hunter, the answer is the Discord. I tried to do in the bot, but of course that doesn't work because I'm I haven't got it accounted to my actual account. If you're in the Discord, which there you go, there is a channel in the Discord, which is Learning Resources, which has the uh, setups, Super League casts, uh, World Cup casts, 
coaching, um, the, like race guides, and then all the concept videos that will get made at some point. But, um, you know, it's going to be after the World Cup because that's taking my focus now. Yeah. There is some good penetration, yep. He tried to jump over! He tried to jump over, oh my god. Keep loving it, but now it is simply a rush to make this a draw with a reroll. Does not trip wire. They said they were gonna have a little, uh, an hour or two between. So I'm gonna ask them. <laughs> I'm gonna ask them. Nobs are a little, honestly, they're not easy for Necro. They're honestly not easy for Necro. I, I you know, now this isn't like, you know, Talk Talk Talk's a really good player. But I, I did I did lose to Talk 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 in the NAF Cup like that. They weren't a joke. I mean, you do have to, and you know, like at the end of the day, Andrew's a good player, isn't he? He's still playing good ball. Yes, his team isn't quite as good as Bright's, but it's not it's not a hundred times worse. Um, I can't remember. Probably. Probably. I, I feel like like this is my standard build for them. Like, but then after seeing the knob offs, <laughs> it did feel like the way you win is by the block, like, you know, blitzing with the ogre and getting lucky. So, double block is pretty tempting on the, like, you know, swapping guard on the ogre and guard on the thrower for double block. It's kind of tempting me more. Hollow tree. Knobs are definitely not OP, but they can still win, right? Like, I still think this is probably like 60 40 in Bright's favour, but it's only 60 40. It's. They're not. You know, they're not a joke. Like, you can still laugh at them <laughs> because 40% win rate isn't very good, is it? But. You know. That's. Uh... Yep, there we go. Don't even play the last game. The last game, the last turn. So the tiebreaker match will happen later today. Um, as it is, we've had two games, two draws. Very exciting. We will find out with an overtime match who will be the final member of the round of 16. Will it be Bright or Andre facing Zerpils in the next round? We'll find out soon. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.